last time I mentioned about Luke, unless I'm drawing a comparison with Dr. Sign. Yeah, I don't know if there is one. I imagine there is. Yeah. The reason for it, Florence, was yeah. the fact that because of the tablets, the way that they work, how it's kind of a pop up within a pop up, you try to scroll the pop up and it scroll behind. Yeah. Who makes you? Who always makes you? Let me add that to side. Long time waiting. Okay. Okay. I have a little bit of 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 a little bit Okay. All I gotta do is remember my password. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who loves DocuSign? Don't yet. Not yet. Thanks. Look at all these party poopers. That's why you're all here, right? Okay. So, first thing is I'm gonna kind of test you guys, and I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you things based on what we've already kind of been talking about, and I'm not talking about DocuSign. I'm talking about navigating command in particular. So. What's the very first thing that we need to do when we when we have to get into command? Incognito. Very good. Ding 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 ding. Say that one. Incognito. I need to go to an incognito window. So how we do that, and we want to make sure that we're working in Google Chrome. Okay. Um, all of our technology is based on Google products. So if you want it to work right, you need to use Google products. Are you live streaming? Yeah. Um, so we're going to hit the three dots right here, okay, that are in this corner of the browser right here to get those three dots. We're going to click on that and we're going to go to new incognito window. Everybody see that? Three dots. <clears throat> Uh, John, did you post the link? Um, yeah, that was in the uh, Apparently, Pond Portal wants to watch it. Nothing like after the start time. Yeah. I know. Now that's going to be in there. Yeah. Right up. <laughs> Why are we going to incognito? It we need to go to incognito. It works fine, and, and I think it works fine anyway. And just regular Chrome on my computer. But here's the problem. Here's the problem. Because they're always working on the technology. Yeah. When you are operating in a regular Chrome window. I'm sorry. We have to stand Guys, can I get everybody's attention? We're starting. We started about five minutes ago. Okay. We ready? Everybody with me? Yeah. Side conversation. Stop. Yes, bro. We get. It? All right. Cool. We operate in an incognito window because when we operate in a regular Chrome window, the way that that works is it will typically pull like your previously stored websites that you've been to to make it faster to load. And when you do that with our Keller Williams technology, because they're always updating it, you're pulling something that's old that may not have the new revisions and updates. Okay. That's why we always operate in incognito. I don't have a problem. Okay. Um, so is it edge? Not? Is it edge that's on there? Okay, try it. Okay. Try it. Yeah. She's in an in private instead of the incognito. Yeah, that's so that's what it is on there. Um, we recommend afterwards though that you definitely download Chrome. Okay, so then we are going to agent.kw.com.
And this is how we're always going to get into command. Um, then your login. Everybody know what their login is? Hopefully. Everybody but me, right? <laughs> Alright, is there anybody in the room that hasn't signed up for DocuSign at all yet? Okay. Okay. Alright, so that being said, whoever hasn't signed up, let's go ahead and, and work on that and get that done. So everybody's with me on this screen right here? Does it I'm look good. similar? I got the tag needle on that. Uh, Agent.kw.com is what you're going to type in the address bar. What's that? Task. Your dashboard is. Uh, your dashboard should look like mine. It may not have the task, but it should still look like this when you first log in. Right, so, yeah, you're in the right place. You're in the right place. Is everybody there? Okay. So, we want to go to the drop down where your name is and go to settings. Now remember I'm just kind of guiding the people that haven't signed up yet, okay? Mm -hmm. Or if you want to verify whether you've signed up, you can follow along. So connected apps, DocuSign, it shows me connected. I'm good to go. Who's not signed up? One, two, three, four. Okay. Um, All right, so when you, for those of you that aren't signed up, when you scroll down, do you see DocuSign in here and it shows that it needs to be connected? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So click on that for me. I'm going to have to kind of float around the room and help you guys, I guess. Connect account. Yep. Yeah, connect account. Now, here, pay attention before you guys start getting trigger happy on those windows. The email that shows up first is the email that is going to connect to your DocuSign account. If that's not the email that you want to use for DocuSign, change it right then and there or it's almost impossible to do it later. Send registration. What's that? Yeah, send registration. So just verify that email in the pop-up. Make sure that's the one you want to use. Fred, is there a way to doc? Is there a, re a way to check? Because mine says I'm assuming that this is, but it has three stars. But I'm assuming. Uh, it's you'll, you'll be able to see when we get into DocuSign sign later. Let me get everybody okay. signed up first. Yep. Okay. 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 John, is your stream working okay with everybody on? Uh, yep, it's, a, it's okay. a little behind, but it's good. Okay. Okay, everybody who needs to get connected, what are your screens looking like? Okay, Tanya, is that the email that you want to use? Yeah. Okay, then everybody, if you have a bar at the bottom that says accept cookies, just go ahead and click on that so it gets out of your way. 
hit send registration email. Okay, now you guys need to go to your email that that was sending an email to and follow the email steps. Okay? You understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it said that it was sending a registration email, so now go do that, and I'm going to have to walk you through it. Unfortunately, mine was done a long time ago, so I can't really show you what it looks like up here. Go to settings. Really? <laughs> yeah, you're connected. Is that the email you intended it to be? All right, let me know how everybody's working through that registration email. I did everything it said to do on my phone for the email, but it still says in progress. Okay. What was on your phone? It said that I had to make a password. Okay. I don't want you guys working on two different devices. It's a lot easier if you do it all in the computer because it's going to try to open up a pop-up so that it makes the registration work correctly and it can't do that if you're on a phone or tablet and a laptop. So do everything from the computer. So can we use the same one we use to get into the main site? The same one what? Password email. I, me personally, I try to keep most of my real estate passwords the same. Okay. So. Hopefully that's a little protected live stream. Now I know. It's just easier to follow that way, right? So what I do just as a as a hint, if you guys are having a hard time maintaining your passwords, I actually created a Word document and I buried it in Dropbox. No, it's password protected. Yeah, you, you have to know the password to open up the file. It's buried in Dropbox. Mm -hmm. So, better than a lot of the books I see that if anybody grabbed. <laughs> Alright, how's everybody doing with the registration? Um, it's It seems like you'll get to this kind of endless loop where you register for the email and it takes you to DocuSign and then it says congratulations, I think, do you want to register again? When that con congratulations screen pops up, just X out of it. There should be an X in the top right corner, just ignore that. It's going to pop up for the first few times, just ignore it and work in DocuSign. Is everybody connected? Mm -hmm. Anybody need help? No. Can I move on? Mm -hmm. Yep. Is this where I should be? Yep. Okay. Yep, yep. Okay. So now everybody close out of that DocuSign window. Because we're gonna get back into it through KW Opportunities. So just close the, the window or the tab, whatever DocuSign's in, just close that down. All right, so when you're back in command, everybody ready? Okay, so back in command, we're going to go over here to opportunities. It's the handshake icon. And hold on, let me take a step back because I know everybody's kind of, a lot of, a lot of you are just kind of using this for the first time. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go to contacts, right? So let's go to contacts. The reason I need to go to contacts is because I can't create an opportunity without a contact living in my database first. Okay? The point of that is that it's a natural progression of how we deal with customers. We get the lead, right? We capture basic contact information. We reach out to them to try to get more contact information. 
we figure out whether they're a buyer opportunity or a seller opportunity or both and then there's a progression that that opportunity flows through to get to a transaction and a close sale and commission right how many of you guys have used keller mortgage so one of my favorite things about Keller Mortgage is when your customer moves through the Keller Mortgage process, you get notified with every step. So um, when an appraisal is ordered, when their docs are in, when the financing commitment's in, like all these different things you get notified of, you and the customer, right? And you both have independent portals that you get to go into. Um, there's been a little bit of pushback with opportunities about how we have to move these cards around right because it seems like it's kind of silly steps or elementary or whatever um, but actually it serves a purpose the long road of this and the end result the end result is going to be just like we experienced with Keller Mortgage so when we move that property card over to inspections it's going to trigger through our KW mobile app that our customer is following that their inspections are scheduled and due on this day right so that's the that's the process and the purpose of these property cards which we'll get into Fred, is it true that they order the appraisal right away yes um, so I'm working with them personally and I was actually looking at two lenders right I had given them my information and one, I know Keller Mortgage is going to save me money. They're saving me about $8,000. Um, so I always kind of knew I was going to use them, but I thought I'd throw it at somebody else too. And I had applied with the other lender, and I hadn't even gotten a response back yet, and the appraisal was ordered from Keller Mortgage. So when I'm missing communication from one, and I'm getting communication probably two or three times a week from the other, the one who's not communicating with me is out, and I'm moving forward with the mortgage. It's beautiful. And I think if, you, if the deal doesn't go through, the customer doesn't get charged for the crazy. That's correct. Yep. All right, everybody in contact? Mm -hmm. So, if you haven't already, I recommend that you add yourself, and we'll use that contact throughout this process. Um, it's a good idea to add yourself to the contact database anyway because all the 8 by 8s that you want to test, all the campaigns, the emails, um, the neighborhood pages, all that stuff, you'll be able to see for yourself. Okay, so we're going to go to add the contact, or sorry, add contact, full name, I'm already in here so I'm not going to do it. Um, you're going to add the full name, primary email, um, phone number. And then as far as mark as lead and add to sales pipeline, <coughs> excuse me, don't worry about those right now. Add to sales pipeline, I haven't actually seen where that correlates to anything else in the database. When you mark it as a lead, it will actually show you in your contact list, there's a like an orange circle with an L in the middle of it that signifies that it's a lead, so you can kind of see all your leads at a glance. But keep in mind, once we've had a two-way conversation with somebody, they're no longer a lead, right? So if I met somebody in at an open house, I might have a tag that is an open house lead, but they're not really a lead because I had a two-way conversation. They're already a contact at that point, and I've probably gotten some basic information that I can then move forward with. All right, everybody got that basic information in? Um, so this add more information down here, go to additional contact information, and that's where you want to put in the um, primary address. And I recommend you do that for anybody who, anybody who you're working with. I mean, any contact, any contact at all, really, because we never know when they're going to be a buyer or seller, especially from the, from the sell side. Um, we're going to be able to create a property page for them, so like their neighborhood landing page, it'll show them what's going on in their area where they live. All right, and then, so just hit create at that point. And then when everybody's ready, then we move on to opportunities.
All right, so mine's set up for team, so it looks a little bit different. Just pretty much just this top part. Um, import from dot loop. Don't even bother asking me about it because I know nothing about it. When dot loop went away, I was gone because dot loop is not protecting our data anymore. If you do that, it'll import a lot of junk. Yeah, like it's everything, right? Yeah. Like I didn't even try it because I don't know what it's going to import, and I want to start fresh and move on. That was a previous chapter spent, in our lives. I spent four days straight getting rid of stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't have a what clear um, I went to opportunities, sorry. So okay. I'm on the opportunities page. I don't have a create opportunity button. Okay. Is it there? Oh, okay. okay. Okay, so let's create an opportunity and use the contact that you just put in, whether it's yourself or whatever you made up. For me, I'll use Bob Buyer. Okay, and then the opportunity name that it creates is so, and then I'm going to choose whether it's a listing or a buyer. Right, I can do that right here. Um, landlord or tenant for our property managers. So all those options are there. I'm gonna leave this on listing. So if you guys wanna make it the same as mine, so we, well, I guess it wouldn't make sense with Bob Buyer then, would it? So let's just call it a buyer. <laughs> Bob listing. Um, okay, so the opportunity name that it defaults to is the person's last name and then whether it's a buyer or a listing opportunity. Because right now we're just working with them and we don't have an address to tie it to, right? Down the road as we get under contract, we either list their house and we have a property address or we find a house that they wanna buy and we have a property address, we're gonna change the opportunity name to the property address and then either listing or sales so that staff can weed through all this stuff easy. That's the way they prefer to see it. If you like to have the customer's name included, then do the property address, the customer's name, and then listing or sale. Yes? Does it make sense to put the, let's just say it's a listing and you have the address of the property, put that in contact record? Yeah, sure. If you know it, if you know it up front, then, because I can change the name right here, Ken. No, so, I'm thinking for, do you think they'll ever interface that? Allow you to interface an address into a listing? A listing opportunity. Well, you mean feed the forms? Yeah. Thinking that should be the goal eventually, but I, I'm sure that I'm sure that's the end result, but I'm not fun like when I name this, it's not going to name it with the property address. It it defaults to the person's name. I think that's right. thought about if you put the address in the you know, prospects for like it's a listing opportunity. In the contact record. As their name? No. Uh, he's talking about listings. No. Right. We, no, I'm, I'm following you. So in the contact record, you put their address, right? Yeah. No, okay. Or primary address, whatever it is, yeah. right? It's always going to, the system always defaults when it creates an opportunity yeah. as the person's last name and whether it's a listing or buyer. Right. And then it's free for you to change. Okay. Yeah. I don't. I, I, I wouldn't anticipate that it automatically creating it from the primary because the system's not going to know whether they're selling their primary house or a secondary home. Right, but I was just thinking in, in, in terms of, okay, I'm defining my listing. At some point in time, if you put it in the contact record, it might be smoother if, okay, I'm creating a listing, I can go get the address from the contact record. Well, you, yeah, I mean, if you know that up front, put as much information as you know right off the bat. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so custom tags, just to show you this, I know we're not into DocuSign yet, but it's kind of a natural progression. So um, something to think about with tags. So like for our team, we have 2018 seller, that's one tag, right? 2019 seller, that's one tag together, the year and whether it's a buyer or seller, we have the same for buyers. Um, we like that so that if we want to go back and call up a specific group, we can do it that way. 
What I discovered in playing around with the tags is that if I did the year as one tag and buyer or seller as a separate tag, I would get commingling of contacts. Because if I bring if I brought up 2019 as a year and buyer as a tag, it's either or, it's not both. Right? You understand what I mean? So I might have anybody who has buyer as a tag, even though they're not the year 2019, would pop up in there. Mm -hmm. So that's why I put those those two terms together in one tag. Um, one of the beautiful things about this is however you organize your business, those custom tags are endless. I'm pretty sure they're unlimited and you can create whatever tags you want. But if I if I can shift, I would try to go simpler in the beginning before you get too crazy. I mean, you're much more experienced, but yeah. I think with somebody that isn't as techy or isn't as experienced, I would probably tend to keep it simpler rather than get it too complicated in the beginning. True. I only point that out because it seems like the, the most simple tags we come up with are buyer and seller. Mm -hmm. But I've found that the year is important. And just so you don't make the same mistake that I did, if you're thinking about doing it, put it together in one term. That's all. Okay. So then we're going to create the opportunity. And then we're going to click on the documents tab. Okay. Now, when I click on the documents tab, everybody, even those that just signed up, should now have started transaction over here. Mm -hmm. Right here. Anybody that doesn't? You don't say it crazy. Okay. If you don't, it's because we had a glitch in doing that registration email. Um, it's still creating it is doing it Oh, these are your you you just pick one of the Well yeah, because she doesn't want to use she doesn't want to create a real contract. I don't want it to go to the real one. So, let's so just put, put, create a contract, create yourself as a contract. You know what, you, know, you might not, at the bottom, you might not have to see it. Yes, put your phone number on your email. Put your phone number on your email. Yeah, and then you Okay, everybody have started transaction? Okay. Does everybody see that? Yeah? Okay. Why do you have that email with an email Okay. So when we click on start a transaction, this is what's going to take us in to DocuSign. Okay, that's what I was doing wrong. Okay. I've been using command, but I was doing it wrong. Okay, so let me let me explain this just so it's not confusing because I know it can be. Well, it was for myself as well. So when I go into doc into documents, I'm thinking that there's something here that I'm going to be able to pull up and write out, right? Yeah, that's doesn't work that way. I know. So. Um, for everybody that was at the E&O meeting too, this is kind of what I was talking about where compliance lives right here in command. So when these contracts get done and we need them for the broker's record, you're going to add the file here. Wherever it was made, wherever you generated it, you're going to add it here. But to do the trend, but to create the documents, if you want to use DocuSign, that lives here. Okay. That's what I was doing wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I did one last night. The documents that are over here are actually just samples. Okay. I don't even think you can pull it up. Yeah, yeah, um, oh, but yeah, this is just showing you what's required. Okay. Well, required, optional, whatever. Right. <clears throat> 
Okay, so then we're going to use the email that we chose for DocuSign. Do Okay, when you log in, does anybody have a screen that looks like mine? No? Did everybody just go right through? Yeah. Uh, I saw. I don't think so. I don't know. Wait, what do you mean? I create an opportunity. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, okay. Um, okay. Um, do you know? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay, that's how I get it. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. 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 No, yeah, oh, yeah. oh, I noticed mine has a loop, so it skipped yeah, that screen. Yeah, yeah that's, so, and that's, and that's fine. It should skip this screen. The reason yeah. I wanted to point this out is before well, Keller Williams set up their partnership with DocuSign, mm -hmm. I was already I already had a DocuSign account from filling out documents for something that I bought. You know, I think it was for um, for having the fence built at, at my house. I had already created a DocuSign account with the same email address. So when I log in, it's asking me under that email address, there's these two profiles. Which one do I want to use? If anybody has that, you want to make sure you're using the Keller Williams Realty Inc. profile because that's the one that's from corporate and that's the one that we need to use. Any other profile that you have um, that's not worded the same is going to be a, a profile that you had set up previously. Okay, Brett, she doesn't have a start a transaction button that I can see. She's in documents. She did documents. Mm -hmm. Images came up. Mm -hmm. Did you make documents? Yeah, I'm going to do it. You have to get one that says oh. Okay. Yeah. It's be, it's be, yeah, DocuSign is not connected yet. That's why. Except that it's in progress. Um, let me check something. I'm going to address that. Okay. okay. All right. So once we're in here, yeah, again, just so that everybody's clear, and for those watching on the live stream and the recording as well, I only have this screen before it goes to DocuSign because it's asking me which of my accounts associated with that email do I want to use. And again, I want to use the Keller Williams Realty Incorporated profile. If it'll work. While I'm waiting for that to go, are there any questions so far? Okay, so this is that screen that I was talking about, all right? 
where I've already been in DocuSign well over 50 times and I'm still getting this, just keep, yeah, exit out. I don't know why it keeps doing that. And, and honestly, in all fairness, when we when we all ado adopted um, dot loop, we had the same issue. So we're gonna get rid of that. And then, is everybody in the specific room of the opportunity, right? Um, I don't know. Or you want a dashboard? Are you see where my tabs are up here? Yeah. Is the line under dashboard or is it under rooms? It's under rooms. Room. Room. Under rooms. Okay. And then it should say whatever your name was and buyer over okay. here up to the left, right? Yep. Mine's moving very slow. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot of people on the Wi Fi. If you have a screen, add documents to your own, just click on this, right? That's oh, that's my screen. Hold on. That's the next screen. Mm. Okay, so this is the one that I just created. I don't know why mine didn't go straight to it. It should have, but it did for all of you guys, so that's good. Yeah. Um, so everybody should look like this, right? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, no. no it doesn't you, have all that stuff on the side. If you side. click the details, it will. Everybody's on the documents. Oh, yeah, yeah, you guys went straight to documents. Oh, so go to details? Documents and that's what it's saying. There are details that will show like that. Okay, you still don't have. Okay. Did you see that you done a while back? Okay, yeah. try it again. No, you're you're fine. You're fine. Okay, so I'm gonna. Some of you guys ended up on this screen, right? When I brought you into the room, this is where you guys ended up. Mm -hmm. A lot of you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to details first. Okay. <laughs> Even though it's gonna bring me into documents, I need to go to details first. So. This one right here for the autofill, the only place, let, let, me show, let me show you the, let me show you the problem first and then I'll show you the solution. Okay, so in documents, I'm going to add a docu document to my room real quick and let's see. No, why, why even do that? Let me just show you the right way. Um, okay, so there was a lot of questions for people that were kind of trying to struggle through this on their own. We would create the contract, we'd, we'd have it all filled out, then we would create the envelope, however we discovered that that's how we needed to do it, right? And we'd look at it, and I might have two buyers and two sellers, and I have to put all of those initial boxes and signature boxes in 12 or 13 pages of a contract, mm -hmm. right? right? Drive anybody crazy, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's because we missed a step on how we're supposed to do that. My awesome buyer's agent, Melissa, oh. discovered oh. the fix and, and the proper way to do it. Um, so you can thank her for this. Oh, thank you. Um, thank so, you. so when we're in this details page, we just want to go to edit and we want to put as much information in here as we know about the property. Go ahead, put the MLS ID, the address, all that stuff. So I'm just going to use 
use your home address, make up an address, whatever you want to use for your own test purposes. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, and then as we move through these details, there's going to be some stuff in here that doesn't make sense to me. I have a feeling it's because of the terms that they use in the course of real estate in Texas, because that's where all this stuff is originating, right? So they're going to use terms that we don't use here. Uh, like local contract amount and local earnest money amount compared to contract amount and earnest money amount. I don't know what the local means. I have no idea. But what is yeah. this room number two? Local Hold on. currency. Tom, what's up? Um, I feel like contingent inspection contingency date. <clears throat> those dates go from the contract date, which is the date the last person signed it. Yes. So does that automatically well, start from that date? Okay. So so here's here's my problem with with some of this stuff. Like even when you put in a listing, the details. It's asking for this. How can we possibly know any of this, right? Yeah. Like it asked for the contingency date and the, the contract date and all that stuff. So just fill out, just fill out what you need for the contract or the listing agreement, whatever applies to it. Can you go back and edit it once you have a contract? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So then you'll automatically start the clock. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you say start the clock, though, I don't. There's like it's not going to yes you can come back here and see what that date yeah, is but say, it's not sending you reminders. Let's say the last signature date was five days after the contract date, so I add inspection contingency. I add 15 days to that date, and then it's gonna it's gonna put it on my list of things to do do and when it's no. done. DocuSign lives independently of that right now. Okay. There's not gonna be reminders generated to you from DocuSign. So I shouldn't even buy. What? Putting it in here. I want to put it in because if I want, if I'm going to look at the contract and it lives in docu in DocuSign, then I want to see those terms. It just it just depends on how you do business and the way you want to organize it. But after yeah. your room number one, do you have a room number two information? Yeah, it's just talking about the. It's just another paragraph. It's room information one, not room one and room two. Oh, information one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so where we get all of the initials and signatures to auto populate and auto fill into the contracts within the room is this column over here. So my seller, my other seller, my listing agent, my, li my um, other listing agent if you have one, buyer one, buyer two, Buyer agent one, buyer two, all of these people over here are how you get the signatures and initial boxes to show up in the right order on the actual contract. Actually, it's the same logic as in that room. View details when we it's, can pull the it's details. very it's very similar. Yeah. But I'll show you. So where I got confused when I was doing this, see how we have people right here? So I would click on people. And I would add the people that are parties to that because that's how we did it in dot loop. Oh, yeah. And all the people that I would add here would not show up on the contract. And it would not create any of the signatures or initial boxes based on who's here. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm not even paying attention to this because at this point, I don't know what this corresponds to. I think honestly, it only corresponds to the people I mean, it kind of tells us right here, transaction side, any visibility. So in, um, these are the people that can actually see the transaction, this room, not the parties to the contract. So I would almost ignore people, to be honest with you, at least at this point until we learn more. So we should make up or ignoring people. <laughs> so we should just make up a seller and phone number. Yeah, yeah. So, so let's go back to details. Okay. We're going to edit and then let's just put in people. And when you're doing these here, you want to make sure that you're using the legal name as how they want to take title to that property. It's okay in your command database to have the nicknames. One thing that's nice in the command database is there's actually a field for their full legal name. 
which is great. That's something that we haven't had before in our previous Keller Williams CRM. You always had to add it as a note or try to finagle it in the record somehow. Um, so let's say I wanted to miss a middle initial. And then I'm putting in their address, right, Ken? Because there's a place for it in the contract. So we need to do that. You have to have an email, too. Well, in order for it to go to signature. Calling. In order for it to go to signature. What's that? In order for it to go for signature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Have Depends. you tested to make sure that it's in command? Yeah, I've done it. Okay. Oh, I'm going to add to your contacts. Hey, okay, we're still labbing this together, right, guys? You can import them into your contacts. Okay. Right. Yes. I clicked on that little person. Yeah. And I got a directory of a ton of people that I don't know who they are. Yeah, me too. They're all, most of them are agents. Oh, uh, yeah. Looks like we're getting the Why? same directory. Right. So. Oh, but, oh, but there's. No, it doesn't add it to, it to the contacts. It tries to pull it from your contacts. Go to your address book. The, your, your address book is your book. The directory is like the agent. So if you want to pull up, like I pull you up, I can just go oh. to the directory and type your name at the top and then pick you there instead of typing all your information in. Okay, yeah. that's not how I heard you say it. I heard you say that you could fill this in and then click that and it'll add it to your contacts. You have contacts. Your directory, your personal directory. But if you click on that, okay. click on the little person. Mine only has, you get an address my address book so just address. has mine. Yes, those are your people. And then you hit fill contact and it'll fill yeah. in the information. And when you're assigning it, you can add the contact to your contact if you didn't already yet. Okay. Is that pull contacts from, from command? Mm -hmm. Yes. No. Yes? No. no. So you know, those, are, those are people that I added to the database of DocuSign. Okay. As far as I know, those, those are not talking oh, right okay. now. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? That? Do they provide for more than two? More than two sellers? Four buyers. Four buyers? No. So you guys do that? By uh, hand, probably. Yes. So at that point, then you would have to add those initial boxes and everything. Right. Okay. But at least for most businesses, this takes care of that. Yeah, Tracy. So you're, when you're adding a contact in command, you have to redo that whole person when you try to put them on a contract in DocuSign. There's no, you said there's no. Yeah, it, it's not coming through right now. Okay. Well, no. even, even that you've got. You're, they're not even taking it from there, from buyer. They're not even taking. We set it up as a buyer, but it's not even. It's not even taking that. Right. So. Okay. Okay. So so seller, seller, and then listing agent. We can. Let's see. Yeah, we need them on there. Listing agent required. So, so we're just going to make um, it And then buyer's agent is me. Nobody knows how old I am now. Oh, so the uh, listing agent is not me. <laughs> um, okay, and then we're gonna hit save. I think. Let me see. Let me let me look through the contract details so that we can see what else we might want to put in here. Okay, so um, let's do contract amount. Obviously, right? Well, let's do an address. So one, two, three, four. Test, drive, or Charlotte, County of Charlotte. Type. So this is what uh, Margarita was talking about right here under the property type. Most of these make sense to us, but then we're like struggling looking for single family home and it's not there. So it would be residential detached. Okay, and then year built if you want to put all this stuff. Um, all right, so contract amount, we'll say 125. So a condo would be a residential attached. Yeah, or a town home. Yeah. Oh, wow. No, but they did have a condominium listed. Was condo there? Yeah. No. Oh yeah, condominium is there. So, like a like a fee simple townhome, then right would be residential attached. Yeah, or a villa, right? Half of the duplex. Yeah. Um. Okay, and then earnest money amount, we'll say 5000 
And again, I don't know what local contract amount means, local earnest money amount. I don't know what the difference is. Contract date, I don't know what the contract date is yet. Who's holding the earnest money? Um, loan contingency date, to me, that's going to be the absolute end drop dead date of your financing term, right? And then inspection contingency date is going to be the last day of your inspections, at least that's the way that I interpret it. And then whatever your expected closing date is. Um, I tend to, because I haven't played with this enough to know if, like, if I put in, yeah, it's not going to really know the date. So this is more for my information to look at later. So, Fred, where you put in the, the closing agent, mm -hmm. you're going to have to put the contact of the address and email and phone number in <coughs> on the document. Yeah, well, we're about to see if it even gives the name of the entity. Oh, okay. So, I'm not sure if it does. Okay, so again, high bid information. Um, I'm sure this is if you're doing auctions and things like that, they provide that information for you. Most of us aren't going to use it. Um, closing details, contract sent to seller. Again, this is all going to be stuff that's after the fact, right? Um, additional information. If there's a seller concession, I can put these in if I know what they are. Um, your referral, if there's a referral on the deal, and then any comments. Um, this is where I'm going to put in. So, you know, one thing I noticed on here that I didn't see that I find curious that they would leave out. Does anybody see a place for the legal description? No, it's not in there. Yeah. Right. You have to do all that. Your part's a little. Yeah, I noticed that when I did the listing agreement. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so that's something that I, we need to make note of and and request that mm -hmm. that gets in there. Um, okay, so that was the main thing I wanted to point out, that the parcel description is not there, or sorry, the parcel ID or the legal description is not there. Um, lot size, the square footage, all this stuff, whatever you want to put in there, you're more than welcome to do, as much or as little. Um, okay, and then I'm going to hit save. <coughs> Everybody with me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, let's go to documents. All right, so we're in a deal. We're getting ready to write an offer. I put all that stuff in there in the details so that it will all get populated on the offer, right? On the on the contract form. Now, very much like dot loop, if I took the time to put all the details in the beginning of a loop. Every document that I do within that loop is going to get populated by that information. Rooms are almost identical to loops in dot loop for those of you that were using dot loop. So now we're just thinking of it as a room opposed to a loop. So if I put all the information in the details of the room, every document that I do within the room will be generated with that information and it'll put initial boxes and signature places where they need to go. Okay, so I'm going to add and I'm going to say DocuSign Forms. Just as a side note, since we're on it, um, there was a question today somebody had about putting information in the MLS. So I'll just show you what this looks like right now. So DocuSign, yeah. It's asking for NRDSID. Yeah, that's your MLS nerds number. Oh. Ask your 2745, oh, which is what it is for most people. Um, all right, so typically we're going to be in the DocuSign Forms library. If you go to Group and then hit this drop down, this is what I'm currently working on, putting form packages together, so that depending on what it is you're doing, everything that you should need and nothing else should be in there. Um, but until I get that done, we're going to be operating in library, and then it's either Florida Association of Realtors or Stellar MLS. So if you're looking for MLS documents, they're under Stellar MLS. And they will be editable and able to be e-signed and everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to go under Florida Association of Realtors. And we'll do an as is. 
I'm pretty sure I can select multiples here. So let's say I want to do an as is with an FHA writer. And I select that. So now it tells me I have two forms selected and I hit add. I'm sorry, where was the writer? You're going to go to the search. Oh. You have the search box at the top. Yeah. Did you already check the as is? Yeah. Okay, and then go to the search, type in FHA. Oh. And it should be the one on the top. You can click that and then hit add selected and it'll send them both oh, in. Okay. okay. There's one, a crisp one? Is that what they Yeah. Yeah, so all the crisp is commingled in here. Right. For those of you that don't know what we're talking about with CRISP, um, it's breakfast cereal too, I suppose. But um, so the certified residential sales, certified residential, what is it? Cert sales package. Huh? No, certified residential purchase. Right. No contract for residential sale and purchase. Sorry, contract for residential sale and purchase. We typically, well, as a brokerage, we don't want to use that because it's not co-authored by the Florida Bar Association, right? It is only Florida Association of Realtors. And if you're using a FAR bar contract and you try to use a crisp addendum with a FAR bar contract, they typically will not line up because the crisp addendum is going to refer to line items and paragraphs that are in the crisp form and it won't make any sense. So we want to use FAR bar contracts and addendums. All right, so now when I open this contract, I'm clicking on the as is to open it up. Yeah. Okay, so my my sellers are in there, the first one and the second one. Um, one thing I don't like is that I really feel like there should be a, a little text box here so we can put and in there. Mm -hmm. So what I've been doing is I've been throwing and in there, but then it wants to tag it to your seller's name. Mm -hmm. So Jim, does it have to have and in there? Okay. Just leave it up. <laughs> so I, I lost you a little bit ago. Um, how do you get to the document when you go to fill it? Click it, edit. Um, Click on it. Did you bring the document in? Why don't you guys go look at documents? Did you just put initials on the document? Four initials? No. Oh, no. no. You good? Yeah, mine didn't either. Desktop, so. Okay. But I'm not going to pull out the sidebar. So it doesn't have it. We'll go back and What? Does yours have the initials? Does it have the initials? What? On the contract? It's not going to show it to you. It's not going to show it to you. Doesn't show it to you. Okay. So the, the question is, is when I'm in here and I'm looking at the contract to edit it, There's no initial places, right? Okay, that's intentional because there's another step involved to get that there. We have to create what's called an envelope because if we're sending it out for electronic signatures, we have to put together an envelope to send it. All right, so in the... Is this page edible? Yes. Yep. Yep. So you can put the problem. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so this is what I was talking about, like the legal description. We don't have a place to autofill that, right? To set that up for autofill yet. Hopefully they get that fixed. So we're having to put it in here. So if I had CC appraiser up, which it, in my workflow, guys, when I'm doing this, I have all the tabs that I need up, the MLS, the appraiser website, all that stuff. So I can copy and paste and just make things move a lot faster, right? Mm -hmm. So I would just copy that from there. I don't want to copy it from the MLS, right? Right. Why? Because it could be in the Absolutely. So make sure you're getting it from the public record. Tom, did you have something? No. Okay. Um, so we're going to copy and paste that in there. Um, contract classes are a different class, so I'm not going to go through this whole thing, and we're just going to look at how we set it up for signatures, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. So now what we want to do is we want to go to envelopes. 
So it's the same and close? Yeah. Yeah, the, the whole people tab to me just, it made sense to me that that's where you would put people so that the signatures would show up in the right place on the contract, and that's not where it is. Okay. So I don't exactly know the purpose of that yet, <clears throat> so I'm just ignoring the people tab. <clears throat> All right, so then we're going to create a new envelope. We can either do it here or the new up here. Oh. Now what you'll see um, so what whatever you want your envelope to meet to, or to be so like typically it's going to be something like that right the name of the property and then offer um, I want to add the room docs to it so I'm going to click room docs and then there's the two I want to send. Wait, I, I missed that last step. Where's room okay. docs? Oh, I see it. <clears throat> yep, we're going to click room docs right here. I'm and sorry, did you say we're going to leave the envelope name please drop this up? Does that make sense to you? No. So we want to change it, right? Because if we left it that way, every every envelope we make right. is going to say so please it's going to be our buyer name? Yeah, so we want to, well, mine is the property address okay. offer. Because later on, I might have an envelope or an envelope that is the property oh. address, whatever addendum, okay. right? Mm -hmm. So I try to keep it organized that way. Yeah. Uh, um, then I'm gonna mark two. I'm gonna mark both of those off or both of those forms, and then click Add Selected. <coughs> Basically, you can create an envelope every time you want them to sign something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, there's a huge advantage to why, though, is because in this business with having to cover our butts so much, there is an absolute electronic paper trail of everything that you do, and that's why. Yeah? Let's say you come back to this a week later and you don't remember if you made an envelope or not. How do you see if you made one? If you, uh, we'll get to that. So after we send this, it'll take us to our envelopes page and show us everything that's either gone out or is waiting on signatures or whatever. Okay, so I've added the documents to the room, and then when I click Add Recipients, this is the key thing right here, this pre-tag roles. That doesn't even show up as an option if we don't fill out that right-hand column with the seller and buyer and all those people, okay? If you don't see this, then you know you forgot to add them, and you need to go back to the details and add them, because otherwise it's gonna be a nightmare trying to put all the signatures in the right place. When you don't have it there, it just says room participants and email address. Yeah. Room participants were the people that showed up before, like Keller Williams. Yes, under under the people tab. Okay. Right. And so so logically, without knowing to fill in the details, I thought that's what it was. So when I saw room participants and I went to people, started adding all those people in, and it still didn't show up. So Yeah, exactly. All right, so we're gonna use pre-tag roles. And then it's going to bring up everybody that you've set up for a pre-tag role, and you're just going to choose who in your list of people gets that. So this is buyer one. That's Bob Buyer. The people. As long as you remember who you put those people. Right. Um, I don't have a buyer two, so I'm not worried about that. And then, yeah. You have to add yourself so you get a copy. Okay, so as the listing agent or the buying agent, mm -hmm. you, sh you would have added yourself in that list, so in the this, details. Can you select yourself on this list? Um, so yeah, so, what, so where, it says, where it says selling sales associate or listing sales associate, you're gonna select yourself, yes. <coughs> where do you set those up? In the details, mm -hmm. that right-hand column that had seller, buyer. we had all the property information mm -hmm. on the left hand Huh? There's a label in this? I didn't see a label. Let me get through this and then I'll touch back on it. Okay, so then seller one is Sam K. Seller. Seller two is Sally Seller. Selling associate is moi. Listing associate is Lister Mike Listy. 
Um, all right, and then we're going to say add selected. Is there an Irish family member in there? Um, all right, so then it'll show you all the people that are involved, right, and then email addresses. It needs email addresses in there. I have not experienced this, but it is my understanding that you can put Hang when the instructor does it, right? <laughs> um, you can put the same email address for these people, right? So if you have a husband and wife um, sharing an email address, right. then you yeah. can do it. It doesn't tie it oh. to independence like .loop did. That's, great. Oh, that's, nice. that's, that's one of the eight. Eight authenticates it, and you get certificates at the end of it. I don't know. I don't know. There's no authentication. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but it doesn't, it, I don't know if it, I have no idea. Oh, I know. I used it before years ago. You can ask for a code, and then okay. you can give the code to your assignment. Mm -hmm. Thank you all. Um, okay, so I'm only interested in Sam being able to sign, well, his wife too. Um, Under more? Okay. I'm not, yeah, I appreciate it, but I'm not going to show them because i got to figure all that out first. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, all right, and then emails, email subject. For me, I've been doing it the same as the envelope name. I've just been keeping it the same. So it would be one, two, three, four, test drive, offer. Mm -hmm. And then your message. Your message should always be... When you're sending something for electronic signature, your message should always be, please review every, you know, please review the entire contract. If you have any questions, please call me, blah, blah, blah. Not just, please sign. Please sign. Because if you say, please sign, they're going to hit the box, boom, 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 which they're probably going to do anyway. Mm -hmm. But at least you've made an attempt to ask them to review the document. Everybody would suggest, please thoroughly read. Right. Yeah, before it's can right. you send a PDF attachment for them like they did with oh. um, um, I don't recall. Okay. Let me see. Let me see as we get through this. Because mm -hmm. I'd ask them to download the P, uh, open up the PDF and review. Yeah. yeah. Review and indicate your acceptance by signing. Right. Yeah. Um. I don't see that. Right. So, question: When when you're doing the sign, you know, like. Like you just assigned all those roles right there. So the listing yeah. sales associate, the buyer sales associate, all those. You have on there needs to sign. Yeah, yeah. So I'm. Thank you. I, I forgot to come back to that. So this is going to set up your permissions for what those people can do. Whether they just receive a copy, they just need to view it, need to sign it, whatever. Right. Oh. <clears throat> um. So. So. Selling, so the, Mr. McLeish can just is just be copy. able to see it. That's all. Right. Okay. Right. Which I'm not. I'm oh, not. Receives, sorry. What's this that? receives a copy. Yeah, right. Receives a copy. Is yeah. there. So I can change all those permissions. Um, I'm not really sending it to this to uh, lister and seller anyway. It's just going to set up that document and show where they're supposed to sign. Okay. And then we hit next. But you can't choose needs to sign and receive the copy. No. It's one or the other. It's one or the other. Probably all, the copy if they the sign copy. something, they're automatically going to have an account that they access. Okay. okay? So if you copy. send it as receives a copy, there's, they won't sign anything because there's nothing to do. Yeah, right. Right? Mm -hmm. it's, just a, it's just like dot .loop was where once you sent something to somebody, even if it was the very first time they ever received anything, it will then ask them to create an account so that they can always come back and review their documents. Okay. Now, this is why we put those people in. Because we can now see that my sellers have two places to sign, right? And my buyers. Now, obviously, I'm not too worried about this because this is a different listing agent. But if I had both sides, it'd be important because I'm sending it to everybody, right? At some point. Um... And then, even at this point, now, if those aren't there, you can imagine what a pain it is to 
I would have to take an initial box and put it where I need it, mm -hmm. put it every place that I need it, mm -hmm. and then select the next person and do the same thing on every page. So that's why it's important to get those people where they belong. Yeah, because that's what it was with DocuSign. You had to keep yeah. kind of one after the other. And one of the cool things here is if you forgot to like check a box when you were first filling out the contract. I can check it there. <clears throat> so I can go to checkbox mm -hmm. and I can say that it needs to go there. Now here's the weird thing. Try to check that. I'm yeah. like clicking all day long. You should have yeah. seen me the first time trying to do this. It was a nightmare. So once you add something, well, you have to go over here and select the value. Check it, and it gets checked. Oh. And if it's not assigned by your buyer, you have to mark the read only, right? Because you don't want them to, to be the one to click it. Correct. Right. Because right now um, it's assigned to him to do it. Yeah. So I don't want them to check it. It's just something that I forgot to do. So the check will show up. I put read only, and it just stays with the contract. There's nothing for them to fill. Okay. Um, so what about checking that after they already signed it? No. If I forgot when I was filling out the contract, and now I want to include it? Before it gets said. Right. Right. So before it's it work like that loop where they change something after they sign it, and they. Uh, yeah, it'll kick things out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do, 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 do. So then I hit send. It's probably for. I didn't. What? You didn't have a buyer email. I didn't. Mm -hmm. No. Well, that was stupid. You went over here, bro. So now when I hit send, at least one was missing. What does what? This one the wrong wrong email. Contact information. Oh, because I have I have all the sellers in there. Okay. Let me backtrack on that. All right. So I do not need. It's your person who caused it. Yeah. All right, so I'm only sending this to the, I only care about my buyer si signing, right? So I, I did that in the beginning to show you how everything would, would show up um, and then forgot to take them out because I don't have email addresses for everybody. So um, let me get rid of these people. That, that. Yeah, that's fine because I'm not worried about him signing what I send. That's up to the listing agent, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so just the two of us. Just the two of us. <laughs> All right. Send. Any error message? Um, awesome. Okay, so it finally went. Now, this is where it's going to show all your envelopes that are going on in that room. Okay, so this one clearly shows that I'm waiting for oh. others on the signature. Um, people in this envelope, how many documents in that envelope, yeah. Can you see your message? I could never get to the part where you weren't adding. It does not, I think, did he type that initials. and read carefully inside? Yeah. Yeah. So there's your message, yeah. You mean? Just where you were showing, you see how good it is that you changed the oh. oh. So, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so I actually see the next one. Yep. And so I take you to the first one. What night did you just find out and got a consistent amount that needs to do? I can get a copy of it and take it easy for you, but it tells me maybe you need it. 
Yeah, it should go. Um, okay, let me backtrack to the details so that you can see where that came from, Ken. Yeah, it's right down there in the corner. So details right here. I need to hit edit, and then I need to put all these people in. Well, yeah, I, I got that part, but where did you get the title? What titles? The Omnicus is about. Uh, it's right here. So, so, so seller the assigned roles, I think, is where you find the pre-tag roles where you did that. Yeah, part. it comes from this. Seller one, what's that information? Seller two, what's that information? Those are the pre-tag roles. Am I following you right? No, I, I, maybe I'm asking a dumb, a really you, dumb question because every time I went to sign it, I got a choice of client. Because I think you were using room participants, and that's not the right way to do it. Well, I figured that out. Okay. I'll stop the play with it. Okay, so your your people that are parties to the contract, no matter what contract or documents they are, they all need to be in here. With Otherwise, it will not use the predefined roles, and you'll have to add all your own signatures and initials. You know what? It added the signatures, but I I, I did call them all clients because when I when I did the drop down. I got a one choice. That was it. Oh, he, he is talking about in the people in the room for this. Because that's where you do the client. Right. Is that what but you didn't about? put the people over here. I did put the people there, but I, I'm wondering where you get your titles, like seller one and seller two. It's here. Okay. It's already there. You see? Seller one, and then who is that person? And then seller two, and who is that person? Oh, it's not something you enter. You do. Okay. All right. Wait, 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 wait. I'm talking oh. about the. You, I see it says seller one. Okay. But when I went in the room and said, I'm sending this, or I created the envelope, I'm sending to this person, what are they? I got client, period. It was a drop down. Okay. Let's go back through it and see if it. Okay. But so, you would, so you would fill okay. this sidebar out? Yeah. He, he said he already yeah. filled this out. Okay. And it, did it put the initials in the place? Oh. Okay. So. Um, Let's just practice again. So let's say I want to add another form. And let's say it's, I don't know, defective drywall. Okay, select that, add it. Now here's the other thing too I want to point out is that every document that you add to the room is automatically going to go at the bottom of the page under the room docs folder. So even if I, the way that I normally structure my folders is I would have, I would add, where is it? Action. Thank you. Action. I would add a folder and this would normally be for our team, we'd call it initial offer. And so I'm gonna move these guys up there Okay, like that, so that I can structure and just at a glance, I can see the process of what these documents were and when. But anytime I add a document, like even if I think I'm working in this right now and I add something, it's gonna get thrown in room docs. You're constantly gonna have to keep moving it up to the folder that you want it in if you wanna organize it that way. I'm sorry, where, did you, where was the add a folder? Actions, right here. Actions. Add folder. So where if you Mine doesn't have add folder. Mine has export room summary, add existing envelopes. Maybe I'm in the wrong. You're, 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 you're in the actions next to the folder. You need to go to actions in the top blue up here. Mm -hmm. So the actions, you can, you can, you're in the envelopes you page. You're not in the, you in the oh, documents I mean that, page. Where do I have to be? Yeah, you can the add it to any room. Call it wherever you want, but, however you want. Oh, he was in there. He was in the room. See the documents? So if you're, oh, yeah. of, if you're making yeah. an offer on the property, oh, okay. Thank you. and you got your initial offer, but then it gets okay. executed, mm -hmm. you make another folder called <coughs> sale documents. Okay. Yep. And then all those other ones in the initial offer are still there. They're still there. I can archive it, get or I can close the folder. I think. See, I can close the folder and get those out of my way, like that, okay. if I wanted to. So especially like with room docs, if there's old stuff in there, 
um, that I maybe brought the wrong I brought the wrong document in and I don't want to look at it anymore, I can just close it up if I've moved everything else where it needs to go. So if you make an offer and it doesn't, it dies. Yeah. Would you move all that stuff into command? <laughs> So put it in the um, change folder. <laughs> Sounds to me like a broken <laughs> compliance question. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, are we gonna put dead deals in there and then call them a lost opportunity? That's probably what we ought to do. So that they're in one place. But do you put the <laughs> That'll be fun. <laughs> yeah. But wouldn't you put the document in after it's executed? What's that? In the folder? What? The document? You're putting an unsigned document in your folder? Yeah, that's my initial offer. Okay. And then if it gets signed, let's say let's say they accept my first offer. Yeah. Let's say they accept my first offer. Right. And now I'm gonna add a new folder and call it <coughs> sale docs or sale documents, whatever I want to call it. Oh. Then I can move it up into there and keep all that stuff organized. That's the way I organize my folders yeah. on the team. Can you, then, can you go from the contract completion through the steps again? To, uh, contract completion through yeah, the so steps. Yeah, so we have the we have the answer. We just did. We're right in that window where you were. Like making another envelope to send for signatures. Yes. Yeah, well, I'll do that with this addendum that I created. Sorry. Yeah, no, I think I did everything you told us to do the first mm -hmm. time around, but I didn't get those uh, initial boxes. Okay, so. Under details, okay. Do you have people over here in this right hand column? I did. I filled it all out. Okay. Lot. Okay. So let's go to. So then you weren't able to create an envelope at all, right? No, I was. Oh, you were. And then when I pulled up the the contract, it was all filled out, but it didn't have the initial box. You're in. not gonna see it anywhere except for when you first create the envelope. Oh. Okay. Not, and then once it's signed, you'll be able to see the signed pages. Right. But if I go back here, I think this is what you're what you're asking me. If I go back here right. and look at this document, it, you won't see it's it. not there. Oh, uh, okay. Nope. Not yet. And plus, you haven't seen it signed, right? So once it's signed, I think it will show up at that point. Mm -hmm. um, but all of those electronic signatures live in the envelope okay. area. All right. Any other questions yet? Okay. Um, Where's that other document? Room docs, effective drywall. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go to envelopes and I'm going to add a new one. Because now what I want to do is I want to get the defective drywall sign. And I'm going to choose the room document. I'm going to choose the defective drywall addendum and hit add selected. <laughs> okay, Ken, I want to focus on you so I can see if I can figure out what you're talking about. So I can add recipient. Mm -hmm. I have pre tag role to choose from. If you didn't have pre-tag role to choose from, it means you didn't put anybody in that right-hand column. It's the only way it gets generated. And how did I get the, I wonder if you put them in the back to them. No, because I've done it that way. It doesn't show up. Oh, yeah, I wonder if that's what he did. Yo, yeah. Yeah, I think that's I'll what you did. I'll have to look, but I... I, I think that's what you did. I to put the initial boxes, the initial boxes. Okay. But in that box, all I got was client. In this drop down right here? Yeah. I, okay, I don't know. <coughs> I haven't seen that. So I did it the way that Jim was suspecting, and I put all the people in the people tab. I did that. And then asked, too. and then when I hit here, I said room participants, but then when the contract shows up, there's no signatures anywhere or initial boxes. I had to hand put them all in, assign them, all that stuff. I so, wonder if I'm remembering two different transactions. Okay. So, I can't help you with that one. Who knows what you're Is there an option to put the little documents okay, where you I'll don't know what a seller or buyer? And you just need some signatures. Maybe it's another role, a different role. Um, yeah, so I'll, sh I'll show you a couple ways to do that. Yeah. So my daughter signed the document. 
<laughs> she was the test. Did she Correct. sign them? Cool. And I, I totally I recommend show. you guys do that. Use your spouses, your family members, whatever, yourself. to, yeah, yourself, yeah. absolutely. If you put yourself in and you can see the way documents go back and forth as a client, one thing that I love about DocuSign that we didn't have in DotLoop is DocuSign actually has a preview so you can see exactly what the person's gonna see on the other end. So that's what we'll get into with this. All right, so I've got in there what needs to happen. Let's see, I need to add my recipients. And this is going to, I just needed to go to Bob Buyer, so that's the only person I'm gonna put in here. Bob Buyer, add selected. And then I'm gonna hit next. Ooh, let's say your buyer is with you. Yes, she wants that too. Wait, wait. Slow your No, roll. I'm just saying. <laughs> wait. I know. Well, you, 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 wanted, you, you, want an you want to you host an in-person signing, right? Yeah. That's yes, what you're talking about. That, I, I like to do All right. Well, I'm going to stumble through that ridiculously. So yeah, let me get through this part first. <laughs> um, okay. So here's the cool thing. Right up here is recipient preview. So if you want to see exactly what they're going to see on their side, oh, click that. Okay. Yeah. This is how it's going to load on a computer. This is how it's going to load on a tablet. And this is how it's going to load on their phone. It lets you see every way that they may look at that. And these documents are completely mobile friendly and they will adjust depending on the device that they're on. And, and where were you that you did that from? I was just checking. Uh, more preview. preview. But what were you Recipient in? preview at oh, the top of the page. But from what were you in envelopes or documents? In, in the envelope. You were in the envelope? Or were you actually in the envelope? No, it's not there. Right here. You're going to hit next from where you had the, where you assigned the people, right? Not yet. Are you right here? No, she's working on that. Okay, I'll, I'll show you after. Okay. Oh, oh. All right, any questions about that? So this is exactly what your customer is going to see, and this is why I let you know that we really need to try to emphasize as much as we can that they read, review, and if agree to the terms, sign the document that you're sending. Okay, because what happens is they click start, initial, and I'm done. And I read nothing and I sent it back to you. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So, and even if you explain to them that you'd like them to carefully review everything, they're probably going to do that anyway, but at least you've set up some kind of guidance as to what you expect from them. That's, that's recorded. Right. Yeah, that's recorded. Right. Because it's so in that email. Because when it goes wrong, them. they're going to say you never told them to read it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Never gonna go yeah, <laughs> if, if that was the case, we wouldn't need documents, right? So then what would happen is then they'd hit finish, they get a thank you for signing or whatever it says, you get notified that it's been signed, and I think at that point it asks them if they'd like to create an account so that they can always come back and review their documents. So okay. So once it's signed, which it is, it should sign it should show up signed in the room or in the envelope? It's going to show up in the envelopes. So you, from there, you have to transfer it to the room. Um, or you just keep it. There? Let me let me go to let me go to one that I've had done. I think you get a different version. Right, it's something and you're always looking for the most recent version. Okay. In my rooms. Hold on. It'll show another copy in your room that says sign. Right. And, and it's got a green. So see how this is all yellow right here? And waiting for others? There'll be another copy that shows up here in the envelopes and it's green and it says that it's signed. I have that somewhere, so let me get into another room. And we'll go in your documents too. That then it will say signed and then you get a certificate, right? If mm -hmm. I recall correctly. Mm -hmm. I just have to find it. Come on. Is 
documents? No, I'm just trying to get the room. To, it's it's running slow because everybody on the Wi-Fi. Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to think of one that I have done. Did you have any of your deals electronically signed? Which ones? Which one? Um, um, yeah, okay, so it's not here. It's not there. It's not under mm -hmm. document. On the, okay, see where it says completed, completed, completed. So if I open that, view documents. And then I open that up. Yeah, it said signed at the end. And then it'll show me the signed copy. When I hit right, under, then I can download or print. So they are not going to live where you originated them. They're going to live in the envelopes, and that's where you're going to either print or download the signed copy. So but when I go into the envelope for that, it still says, your says document. wait. Did down. you have multiple places for somebody to sign? Mm -hmm. Well, did you just have your daughter sign? Yeah. Was was did you set up multiple signatures? No, just sure. All right, then let me talk to you. Let me work that through with you after. Okay. It'll be in your documents too. When you get yeah, in it. Um, or, yeah, it will say um, right here. Signed. See the sign, the green tag, and the sign. So now when I click on that, is it showing me the signed copy? Yeah, it'll show you. Yeah. So there's my signed copy. So you don't have to transfer for them. Right. On my both. So just some both. Yeah, only once it's signed does it come over, I believe, though, right? When it's not, when it's waiting on signatures, it lives in the envelope. Once it's signed, it comes over. Well, you already, you started it in your documents. So right. the, the original is going to be there, and that's why we do the folders, right? Mm -hmm. So we separate them so that we know right. what we're doing. Right. right. Yeah, because, I mean, think about it. If you're not using the folders like we do, then... Look at all these documents in one deal, and this is, you know, not, this was a condo, and so there's probably a little bit more documents in here with condo regs and all that stuff in the in the addendums. But if you don't have this organized, everything lives in room docs, and you get confused, and it takes you longer to identify what you're looking for. Yes. <clears throat> can I create a document like if it's a condo? Can I download the condo docs? Put an initial mark on the first page and make sure that they've read it and then they initial it? Can I just um, import a PDF and slam a... Yeah. Slam a yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, initial spot on it. That's let me, let me, let me save that for the next class. I'll okay. put together a tutorial video for that because I have to do that myself. I haven't done that yet. Okay. You did it? <clears throat> right. You want to teach it? <laughs> I mean, Maybe. does it do like every document you're going to have one? Can you just like, let's say you have a FHA addendum and the contract, can you download it and do one file and then just upload it to there? Or is it going to be one document each, FHA um, addendum and I believe it is, oh. it's one document each because that's how you set it up originally. Okay. Right? Can you set it up differently to put the same, just? It does it, it does it form by form. I don't think that you can put them together. So when you send it to your clients, instead of just, they're going to get two different emails for those two different documents or just one email? Um, let me go back and look at the preview. I like doing them separately because then if you make a change on one, but the other one doesn't need to be changed, then they're together. It Not doesn't matter because you just get them to sign that initial. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, one one of the things that I've I've gotten a lot of comments on is, and let me know if any of you have tried this. How do I get a document just to look at it, print it out, download it, right? Right? Like like say a seller's disclosure. I'm going to take a seller's disclosure to the listing appointment with me. Mm -hmm. How do I download it? Has anybody tried? Yeah, I just mm -hmm. went to KW Forms and printed something. Printed. That's not in DocuSign. No, it's not. Right, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> okay. saying DocuSign. All right. Um, so I'll get into that. Let me go back to what Yohan was talking about and see if I can find it. Um, all right, what was I on? One, two, uh, is this it? Yeah, okay. So we sent two forms out. 
And if I go to the envelope, can I preview this once it's been sent? Yeah. You can even correct it. What? You can oh, even correct, correct, yeah. Yeah, so if I messed something up, will it let me do it that way? And then. In a recent. You know, but on the when you sent the first two documents out, you just made one one send. You yeah. send them separate. So I imagine yeah. they go together. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that they do. That's what I, this is what I wanted to get into right here was look at it. And no, see how I've got two separate documents here? Then I click, yeah, so it goes out in one email, but it's going to have them set up separately. So see how I get through all the pages here, you want? And then right here is the next one. Like that. Okay. So they should get one email separated by which document it is. They, I don't think they'd have to go back out and get another email and then look at that for the addendum. If I send them as an envelope, well, that's exactly how it works. I put them all together as one envelope, right? Yeah. So it's going to send all those documents at one time. At one. Yeah. But yeah. then when you download, let's say you get it back on and you want to download it all together to send it to the to email it to the other agent, does he do that, or you have to download each document by one by one, or is it just the envelope that you're downloading? Let me let me try it, Melissa. I'm going to send it to you to sign. Okay. Okay. Um, let me try it. I'll have her sign it while we're working on something else, and then we'll see. So that's a great question. Um, all right, I gotta fix this. Oh, go. So, I think I would turn my ringer off right now. Okay, it has been updated, and then you should have it. Um, okay, so I actually did a, um, a tutorial video for you guys, too. You can go back into the Facebook group and look for it. Um, I'll repost it for those of you that are in here so that you can go back and look at it. Um, if I want a document, so... Where this is really going to apply is a buyer's broker agreement, right? If I want to, if I'm meeting with a buyer and I want to have a buyer broker agreement, I just want to be able to download it and take it with me, completely empty, right? Without having to fill it in. There's no way to do it if I go to. So if I'm in my dashboard like this, when it loads. Where do you want to start with a opportunity? I don't want to. Not necessarily. I mean, let's say, let's. Say, I mean, in that in that case, yeah. If I'm going on an appointment, yeah. I should be following the opportunity process, right? But for whatever reason, I just want to get a document. Let's say I'm new and I just want to start reading through these contracts and I don't know where to go get them, right? Okay. Um, if I go to my docs right here and I click on my documents, there's nothing there because this is kind of like your own folder for you to store whatever it is that you want. So you get some storage space in here too. If I go to forms, then here's where all the forms live. If I go to Florida Association of Realtors and I want the as is, so let's see, is that the crisp? Yeah, so um, I'll just take this one because I'm tired of looking for them. Um, Okay, so here's my form with a big fat watermark on every page that says sample form, mm -hmm. right? In DocuSign, to just go look at a form, this is the only way to do it, except for the trick that I found. <clears throat> but if you just want to look at it, anything that I do in here, so that just takes me to full page. This shows me a thumbnail of all the pages. There's nothing in here if I right click. I can save each page, but it's going to have the waterproof or the watermark on it, right? <clears throat> so there's no way for me to download a blank form, print a blank form at all. So what I did was I went to rooms. And it took me an hour to walk down the hallway to get to the room. Yeah. Um, okay, and then I'm going to add new. This is to add a new room. Okay, this blue tab over here. Click on that. 
and my room name is document download document view whatever you want to call it right whatever makes sense to you so I'm gonna call it I'm gonna call it view documents for me just because I have document download already okay um, my role is the agent owner side I just put list and buy because I'm actually gonna bring multiple documents in here okay I'm, I don't care about a photo so then I hit save And it's going to take me into the new room. Okay, so I'm in my room called View Documents or Document Download, whatever it is. And I'm going to go to Documents. I'm going to, right off the bat, add a folder, which is under Actions. I'm going to add folder. And I'm going to put in Listing Docs or Documents, whatever you want to call it. Okay. I'm going to put... I'm going to create another folder, call it Buyer Docs. And then I'm going to go to Add, the plus Add sign, the blue rectangle in the middle. Click that. Go to DocuSign Forms. And I'm going to choose. Florida Association of Realtors, and I want the as is, and I want buyer's request for repairs and remedies, buyer's walkthrough, um, condominium rider, homeowners association disclosure. <laughs> Uh, FHA, VA, appraisal contingency. So you get the point, right? I'm selecting everything that I might want for a buyer. And I'm going to hit add. And I'm going to move all these up to where they need to go, which is the buyer docs. I learned that you can, can I just do this? Them. Yeah, there we go. I just saw that. I can go like that. And then well, up in the top. all the way up. <coughs> and we'll do them all. You have to click the box at the top after you click them. Oh, does it say more actions or something? Mm -hmm. See up at the top where oh, there's that yeah. little paper folder thing that says Zoom? So you can move it to that room, that folder. This one? Mm-hmm. Folder in current room. And I wanted to go to buyer docs. Awesome. Thank you. You're teaching the next class. <laughs> Just because I played with it a lot. <laughs> so. All right, and then we're going to say move. I'm all about easier. <laughs> now, when I want to go get a document, whether it's a buyer or let me show you the listing docs just so I can show you how this works. So, um, I got one that got away from me here. All right. Okay, so I want to add. So for a listing, we need to add our NLS forms, right? So we'll see what that looks like. So I'm going to select DocuSign Forms. I'm going to go to Stellar MLS. And then I'm going to click all of these things that I might need for a listing. So that's that, that, that. Okay, add. Select that. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Got time for that. Okay. Aye, aye, aye. Um, all right, so I'm going to move this up to here. That one there. That one there. Okay, so now if I'm going on a listing appointment and I need these documents, let's say I just want to, I, well, I don't know if I'm going to use the owner's waiver or not, so I just want to have it ready, right? Then I can pull it up, and because it's now in a room, I can either download it or print it. 
unless somebody else finds a way, this is the only way I had found to be able to go get blank forms if you need them. So well, that's it's a little cumbersome, isn't it? Once you, once you create, once you, once you the, set, the setup is the only time, but I mean, you know. Will there be, it's a company wide bunch of set files, what, like templates? Or that's what, that's uh, what yeah, so, that, so that's what I'm working on yeah. right now. Okay. So if. But down the road, we'll have some. Yeah. 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 Um, so if I was to go to add DocuSign forms, the group, and then these right here, whether you're listing a house mm -hmm. and all that stuff, that's what I'm working on right now. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's some time involved in the initial setup, but I don't know any other way to go get a blank form if you want to download it or print it. So, you can always, huh? You had to set a loop just like this. Mm -hmm. so you couldn't print from that loop at all. It got it got it got to the point where you could just go get the form and download it or print. Yeah, yeah. Is there a template? Yeah. But 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 guys, listen to this. So this is brand new, right? We just started this with DocuSign this year. Okay, Dot Loop just got to that point, and we've been working with them since 2011, and they had just gotten to that point in the last year. So at least we're not at the mercy of other people because we're working hand in hand with these people, and most of it is proprietary software in development. I yes. kind of like DocuSign better. I do. I mean, the, the biggest thing for most of you should be the fact that you can want, use one email address for two people. I probably heard more pushback on that with Dot Loop than anything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the question is, can you still get forms uh, from the MLS through uh, Transaction Desk or uh, mm -hmm. what's the other one? Form simplicity. form simplicity. Yes. So. Yeah, just let me let me go back to that real quick. So, this is the only thing you need for compliance. Your documents have to end up here in command, okay? In the opportunity under the documents, it does not matter to the brokerage anymore where you generate those documents, where you get them signed. If you don't want to use DocuSign, you don't have to, okay? If you want to use Trans, the reason we needed you to do it in Dot Loop before. And we were frustrated with everybody using transaction desk and form simplicity is the fact that compliance lived in dot loop. That is no longer the case. Compliance lives in command as long as the files end up there. You can generate and get your documents signed from any other format that you want to use. Which brings me to the next question. Do you need to get your documents from DocuSign into command or will they be yeah. How there? Do they work? I just want to sign your documents. Once yeah. they're signed yeah. for yeah. compliance. Yeah, so the only way I know to do it right now is to actually download it to your computer and then upload it to command. Um, I foresee that that goes away and that it no and that somehow, you know, it, it links up because originally what we were told and what we thought was going to happen is we wouldn't even move out of command into DocuSign. Everything was going to live in that space, right? So I don't know if it's just we haven't gotten to that point yet or if it's always going to be this way. Um, but I would imagine that it's going to be much more simple getting those documents over. Okay, FYI, yeah. the, the, my daughter's signature was time stamped, date stamped, but not the initials. Okay. I'll have to look at it. Okay. Um, I think that's it, unless anybody has any questions. What? Posting in person signing? You really going to remind me of that and make me struggle through it? You're not going to struggle. I, I help you. Have you even I've tried? Done, I've done it once. Okay. No. The floor is yours. Do not ask me. The floor is it's yours. It's on the list. You know more than I do. <laughs> no, I don't. It's on the list because I was talking to Maggie and she had <laughs> questions. Thank you, Brett. You're welcome, Tom. The download one, if you can download them together to send it to the other agent. Oh, yeah. That's oh, yeah. yeah. So you signed that? I did. Right? Yes. Okay. Thank you, y'all. Um, all right, so rooms. Does the other agent have to set up a DocuSign account? If only if they want to use DocuSign to send it. Otherwise, they would receive, like if you just have it receives a copy, like an email. they just receive a copy and they can sign They can sign up if they want to. Yeah, but can they forward it to their customer? Well, they'll download the PDF. They would have to email it just like And then put it into what they want. Yeah. 
Can, we, can they open up DocuSign, the, the document that you send them from DocuSign? You're going to send it to them. And right. Can, they, can, they, so, can so, they add the signature box? Yes. One of the let me, let me get to Yon's and then I'll okay. come back to that. I think that's where he was. Um, no, no, you, you, don't want, to, you want to see that once it's signed, is it all in one form, right? Like if I download it, like <clears> if I can't send it to them through DocuSign and I want to just email it to them PDF, when I download it, I want to make sure it's just one document. Right, instead thing. of yeah. the contract and then the addendum and then yeah. the addendum. Okay. You Thank you. You welcome. All right. All right. So. Melissa signed that, here's the signed document, and it would appear that it came through in separate documents. But if you click on them, I see a little circle on top of them. Okay. Like when you go back? Yep, yeah, yeah. Yep. So like if you click on all of them and then download them all. And yeah. this, I'm and then I can download them, yes. Yeah. And it'll be one document. It should be, yeah. Okay, yeah. Let me just see. Yeah, it's a zip file. I don't know it's a zip file though, which tells me it's two documents. We'll have to extract. Yeah, separate. Oh, that's up. Yeah. Um, so one nice thing though is it automatically puts that signed label on it for you once it's been signed. So we're learning, guys. It's it's all these things that we got to try to figure out, right? So um, we're working together to try to figure it out. And if you guys have anything that comes up and you want to know, let Kelly know because she lets me know, or you can let me know directly. So any questions? Thank you. You're welcome. Is that you? Yes, Margarita. Can I get a private session? With you? <laughs> it's gonna cost. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'll be here for a little bit. So, if anybody wants to bug me after. Can we just see where my signed documents were? Well, you just get your attention for one minute. Is everybody in the band and playing with it? Because it's starting to crank out. People are doing Facebook ad campaigns and get really, really good results for a very small amount of money. Um, if you haven't been in command playing around with it, mm -hmm. just go ahead and set yourself up like you were a customer and put, put yourself on all the smart plans and just play around with it. You're not going to break it. And um, you'll get more comfortable with it. You'll see what your customers will be getting, right? Yeah. And then run with it. And it's going to probably blow your mind once you start so, to get more comfortable with it. So I, I heard something interesting that reminded me of this whole process. And it's something I think everybody needs to keep in mind. So I subscribed to Disney Plus like the day before it actually came out, right? My, my cousin wanted to do it for my son, so we subscribed. Then we heard it, that got broken, right? We're talking about Disney's dollars and technology got hacked. But when I was in there watching some things, I watched, uh, it's, there's a series in there about Walt Disney and when he created Disneyland. All of his investors were hounding him. They were millions and millions of dollars over budget and behind, and they kept asking him, when's it gonna be done? And he said, well, if we all keep dreaming, it's never gonna be done. Right? Exactly. So it's, it's always gonna be a work in process yeah. because mm -hmm. Gary's behind us trying to give us what we need to succeed. So today yeah. when I heard, I was on a call, and they said, well, when you first got started in real estate, did you not ever do an open house? Did you were a master at doing open houses? We all start something where we're not masters at it. Mm -hmm. And then we kind of uh, improve our craft, right? right? Yeah. So if you don't start with this thing until it's done, you're never going to start because it's never going to be done. <laughs> yeah. But it will get easier. I, I, I believe me. And even with this, I remember when we got Dot Loop. Oh my God, Dot Loop! Everybody hated Dot Loop. Now everybody loves Dot Loop. They don't want you rid of Dot Loop. It's going to be the same thing with Dot Design. And on, and honestly, like I said, we had Dot Loop since 2011. Dot Loop has only gotten incredible in the last year and a half. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so this will get better, and it will get easier only if you start to adopt it. Mm -hmm. And if you don't adopt it, you're going to get left in the dust. It's, 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 it's just the reality of the 